Today, we're going to be continuing our state of the industry video series, specifically around Amazon FBA. In this video in particular, we're going to be covering the uh, Amazon FBA industry from $250,000 all the way up to $500,000. We're going to be exploring the opportunities that exist if you're trying to sell one of these businesses, what you should expect, or if you're a buyer, what kind of advantages or tactics can you use to acquire a business in this range? Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, my name is Gregory L. Frank. I am the Director of Marketing over at Empire Flippers. If you don't know what we do, we help people buy and sell online businesses literally every single day of the week. We're the number one largest curated marketplace in the world. And when it comes to Amazon FBA in particular, we were the first broker to ever sell these businesses and we sell more FBA businesses than literally anyone else in the industry. So you're in good hands here when it comes to talking about FBA data. So this specific price range, and by the way, all the data I'm gonna be covering in this video is inside of our state of the industry report. It's a gigantic document that covers way more than just FBA and breaks this down even further with analysis. So if you want to get that report, you can go ahead and click the link down below and download the state of the industry report. But before you do that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified every time we do a new video on our YouTube channel here, which we cover all sorts of topics between buying and selling online businesses to general marketing and entrepreneurship advice. So let's get into the FBA data. So 2020 was a crazy year as far as FBA is concerned, really any business asset to be honest, and life in general. 2020 was a spectacularly strange year for most of us. But when it comes to FBA specifically, there is a lot of opportunity here. So in the 250 to 500,000 range, we sold 11 FBA businesses in this range. And if you wanna look at their average TTM multiple, your trailing 12 month average, you're looking at a multiple of 32X if the business was declining, a 42X if the business was stable, and if you were uh, selling an FBA business that was growing in this price range, you have uh, the opportunity to get a 30.5X. And on average, it took us about 73 days to sell one of these businesses. So this is all very interesting. And if you watch the other videos on FBA, you can already probably tell what I'm about to say is that it does seem buyers enjoy buying businesses that have stability over growth, uh, especially in the higher up uh, levels of these different pricing tiers. But there's something about buying a stable business and it just goes to show that people, buyers aren't looking to just lowball you all the time in terms of what they want. They really just want to buy a premium business that is providing quality products that's going to provide them as the new owner value years over years to come. So a lot of times stability can actually be more attractive than growth, which is intriguing, very interesting. And it makes sense because growth, a lot of people don't realize, uh, especially when they're brand new as an entrepreneur and they're, maybe they're running a business that is, you know, they're one person, a one man show kind of scenario, that growth can be just as deadly as declining. So there is a lot of traps that can happen in the growth phase that entrepreneurs don't realize. Everyone thinks, oh, my, my revenue just 10X, but a lot of times your net profit doesn't 10X. In fact, your net profit can go down if you 10X revenue for all sorts of reasons that people don't think about. So I th do think it is interesting buyers are looking at the market and they're really putting the quality offers on stability over growth. Now, again, this is only 11 transactions, so we can't say like that is the end all be all. If you have a growing FBA business, there's a good chance you can beat the stability uh, TTM model, especially right now, because remember this data is from 2020. It was a whole completed year we looked at, and a lot of the valuations for FBA businesses didn't start going to hyperdrive till Q3 of 2020, and they have continued to go up in 2021. So this is a bit old in terms of you know judging where the market is, but this is a full year of complete data that does include that giant growth cycle. So just realize 11 transactions, if you have a growing business, doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get a less of a multiple than if you had a stable business, but it does seem to suggest that buyers like stability. 
So the interesting thing about this price range and also a little bit in the $100,000, $250,000 tier is this is where earnouts really start making a bigger play. So out of those 11 transactions, four of the businesses we sold had a earnout. So if you don't know where earnout is, all that means is if your business was $450,000 that buyer might have put up, say, 350 grand and pays you the final $100,000 over some period of time. It's an earnout uh, structured deal. So these kind of deal structures start becoming a lot more common in this kind of pricing tier. Now, if you watch the other videos, you can definitely see, for example, the 500,000 to $1 million range, pretty much everything had an earnout, right? And there's a very good reason why this happens. Sellers, obviously, if you're a seller, you don't like this because you want to get all your money up front, right? You don't want to do an earn out, there's added risk, all that kind of stuff. But the problem is in the 250,000 to $500,000 range, typically people don't have that kind of money just laying around in a checking account. Typically they're going to have to liquidate some assets or juggle their money a little bit, maybe do a HELOC or some kind of fundraising to really acquire what you have built because most savvy entrepreneurs and high net worth individuals typically don't keep large pools of liquidity on hand like that. Now, they do keep assets that they can liquidate quick for opportunities such as buying your business, uh, buying a business like what you have. But usually a lot of people in this range are doing everything they can to make their dollars work, uh, go further by investing that in various assets, right? And now they're looking at yours, if you are uh, the seller, uh, to perhaps acquire the asset you have built, right? So if you are a seller, just realize you will probably have an earnout. Like not always. Uh, obviously, there was more deals in this pricing uh, tier that didn't have an earnout than did. But you, that flexibility is key. Knowing going in, there's a good chance in order to sell your business, you're going to have to be flexible and accept an earnout. So, how much did buyers actually pay on these earnouts? Like, are they putting down 20%, 25%, 50%? What was it? So the average upfront payment amount in this pricing tier was 74.74%. I like the symmetry of those numbers, but basically you are still getting almost two thirds. I mean, basically two thirds is like a rounding error if, uh, if you don't count as two thirds, but two thirds of your list price upfront or rather your sales price upfront when it comes to selling these businesses, that's fantastic. So you are basically getting, um, you know, that 75% of equity right away. And the buyer is only financing 25% of the deal. And if you look at other pricing tiers, this is pretty normal. Like there's nothing like amazing happening here. There, it follows pretty much every trend we see for the most part. So if you are afraid or like, oh my God, would I do, should I accept a 30% earn out or uh, you know, a 50% earn out? Like if it's above 25%, like if a buyer comes to you and offers you a deal where they're giving you less than 75% upfront, you should highly question that deal for the most part, not in, always, not in every case, because of course there's always going to be caveats, but you know it is diverging from the average if a buyer is giving you less than 75% upfront. So that is a good metric to keep in mind, whether you decide to sell your business with us or privately, right? It's just good to know what are buyers thinking, what are they doing in the ecosystem, whether you use a broker or not. So 75% pretty average. That, is, that shouldn't uh, <laughs> you know, make you fear that you're getting a bad deal if they offer you 75%. So let's talk about buyers real quick, and then we'll move more into the sell side. So if you're an FBA buyer in this space, you're in a good place to be able to finance, you know, about 25% of a business, which is fantastic. Uh, there is usually no financing available in the online business space, unless you go very, very big numbers, like 10 million up is when more traditional like business financing can really come into play usually just simply does not exist in this level. In fact, most kind of financing you can find at this level is gonna be like personal guarantee loans, which, hey, if you wanna take that risk, that's up to you, but I wouldn't recommend it because you know internet marketing and internet businesses are so volatile, that is a big risk. So you better be very confident in your skill to take a loan like that. But you can mitigate that risk by doing an earnout. And while most businesses in this pricing tier did not have an earnout, there is still a possibility for you to use earnouts to your advantage. And that does all sorts of great things for you because it mitigates your capital exposure. 
especially if you're using deal structures that have some kind of performance earn up where the business has to achieve certain milestones, has to uh, remain at a certain profitability level. So there's all kinds of things you can do here. And this is really when more complex deal structures can start being at play. But do be careful because like I said, most of these businesses did not have an earn out. Most of them were bought for all cash on their sales price. So if your deal structuring is too complex or too slated in your favor where this, it gives the seller some spooks, then you could lose the deal entirely. So don't try to do such a complex deal structure that works in your favor so much and mitigates your capital so much that the seller just decides, hey, I'm gonna go with all cash buyer. Because for the seller, it's way less risk, right? They don't know if you're gonna pay out. Now, most buyers who do earnouts on Empire Flippers do end up paying out the full earnout. It's very rare that that doesn't happen. It does happen, but it's very rare. So sellers on our platform who have sold with us at least a few times tend to be a little bit more comfortable with the earnout scenario. But you yourself as a buyer should be careful on your deal structuring. At most, it should probably be a very simple kind of deal structuring, maybe a basic milestone thing where, hey, it needs to be up at this net profit level. Of course, sellers will want you to do revenue instead of net profit for a variety of reasons. But if you can get net profit, try to be, I don't know, around 60%, 70% of the monthly net profit. So that way the seller's like, okay, well, even if it goes down by say 40%, I'll still get paid my earnings. And that also helps you, you know, a, keep your capital exposure to a smaller level. Now, of course, you'd probably want it higher, like 80%, 90%, but sellers are not going to go for that. Uh, so 60%, maybe even 50% uh, on an earnout milestone could be okay. Um, but to be honest, you may not even want to do that because again, most of these businesses are being bought for cash. So you may be better off just doing a simple earnout where, hey, I'm going to pay you X amount per month, no matter what happens to the business over a period of say six months to a year and a half. I think that is probably a pretty good earnout schedule. Most of the earnout schedules are going to be a little bit more aggressive than that at this level because it is a smaller pricing tier. You know, it's not like a multiple seven-figure business. So most of the of the earnout is probably going to be paid off between three to six months. But if you wanted to extend it, you could probably go up to a year and a half, and a seller might accept that. So keep that in mind. But again, keep in mind if you do an earnout there's a good chance you could lose the deal to an all cash offer. So make your earnouts as simple as possible where the seller can feel comfortable with what they're signing. So let's move into actually selling one of these businesses. So if you're sitting on an FBA business that is valued around this, and if you don't know if you are or not, you can just click the link down below to our free valuation tool. It'll take you all five minutes, 100% free, and you can get an automated valuation based off real sales data that this report is also based off of, and you can find out what your business is worth there. But let's say you have a business, 250,000 to $500,000 in the Amazon FBA space. What does your prospects of selling look like? Well, I already kind of covered a lot of it, is you're looking at a potential earnout. You know, most of the businesses are bought for cash, so you're sitting good in terms of wanting as the maximum upfront cash allowed. Uh, you know, 100%, you're sitting good to get that. And even if you do get an earnout, most likely you're going to get 75% of that paid upfront anyways. Now, what I would suggest for you as a seller is because most businesses do not have an earnout in this in this pricing tier is be extra hard, which buyers listening to this is going to hate me that I'm saying this, but be extra hard on the buyer that offers you an earnout. Try to get them to put more cash up front, knowing that another cash offer might come into play uh, as you're negotiating back and forth with that buyer. So that kind of uh, pressure can bring up that upfront amount that the buyer is gonna pay you. You probably still have to accept earn on that scenario, but the buyer doesn't wanna lose you out to an all, uh, lose out to the deal that you have to an all cash buyer, right? So you're in a position of power here where the buyer who is looking for an earn out is in a position of weakness. So you're able to kind of shop around to different offers much uh, more ably uh, and without being beholden to this buyer wanting some kind of earn out structure. So, that only takes that only takes into account, by the way, if you are selling your FBA business with a broker, because if you're doing a private deal, it's very unlikely that you're going to have you know the stampede of potential buyers looking at your business. And in fact, that's why buyers like private deals because 
it behooves them to do private deal flow because it minimizes the competition. There's less people uh, actively putting offers on your business. Therefore, they're hoping to get a better deal, especially if you don't know what your business is worth. And that is a really big problem actually in this space particular, because in this space particular, the FBA entrepreneur, while they're successful, we want to call them mega successful. Like it's an amazing accomplishment of what they have built, but they could still be relatively new to the whole entrepreneurship space. And maybe they just built this business over the last two or three years, and they could even still be working a nine to five at some corporate uh, job, right? I mean, this is enough of, uh, this is a big enough business to quit your job for sure. Uh, but a lot of people, this could still be kind of a side hustle, a very big side hustle, but still a side hustle. So with that said, entrepreneurs in the space might not be as aware as to what their value is. And buyers in particular could use that to their advantage when they are doing private deal flow. So if you are a seller in this range, I highly recommend you use a broker because this will probably be one of your first exit events if, if this is your uh, main business, right? And you want to make sure you get as most as much value as possible out of it right now with that said this is also the pricing tier where you need to start being flexible so if you were if you sold a, an fba business in the sub hundred thousand dollar range less likely you have to be flexible in terms of price and earnouts but at the 250 to five hundred thousand dollar range that's where flexibility becomes key to sell your business now I don't just mean flexibility, by the way, in the deal structure, like in the earnout. I it could be in all kinds of different ways, such as ultimately the sales price, right? This, you might be flexible on the sales price. Now, a buyer might come to you and they say, "Hey, I want to do an upfront amount of seventy-five percent and pay out the remaining twenty-five percent over a period of time, right?" And that might be a good deal. But if you're flexible on your sales price, what you could do, you could counter that and say, "Hey." well, why don't you pay me full price, but I'll sell the business at 85% of what is listed at right now. So you're going to take a 15% hit, but ultimately you're going to get 10% more cash in your pocket today. That's the kind of flexibility I'm talking about. You don't want to be rigid at this level because you're getting to the point where you need some flexibility to help the buyer get over the line to actually acquire your business. And flexibility or lack of flexibility rather, is one of the main things I educate entrepreneurs on as in terms of killing deals. I've seen people so rigid that they almost lost millions of dollars over a $50,000 uh, complaint. Like they wanted an extra 50 grand, they couldn't get it. And so they were sacrificing literally millions of dollars for $50,000. Now, obviously that's a different pricing tier completely, but the same kind of logic applies here. Which one would age your life more? an 85% uh, sell versus a uh, list price or a 75%. Or if you couldn't uh, stomach that 85% versus 100%, which one's better? Getting 85% of money in your pocket now or maybe never because maybe you killed the only person really looking at your deal. And maybe that's maybe your deal isn't qu as quality as some of the other ones. So you're not really getting these cash offers. So always think about it in these terms. Be flexible. That is the key at this level to really sell your business in a way where it can supercharge other aspects of your life with that big exit event. Okay, so that is the $250,000 to $500,000 level with Amazon FBA. This, this is a shorter video. This is uh, I'm imagining the other videos as we go deeper down in the smaller pricing tiers will probably be around this length. So if you enjoyed this content, you want to see more like it, you can download our industry report, link in the description below. Also check out our valuation tool, or if you're ready to sell, which honestly in five years of being in the M&A online business space, I've never seen a better time to sell. Multiples are through the roof. Right now is the perfect window of opportunity if you want to sell for the best price. There will be a link down below where you can start the selling process with us as well if you want to do that. And there's no risk. It's 100% free to list your business with us. And you're not committed to anything until you accept our valuation and actually go live on a marketplace. So if you do the vetting process, absolutely hate our valuation, no problem. <laughs> it's all good. We're, we're pretty uh, no pressure sales on that kind of stuff. So we're happy to help you whether you use us or not at the end of the day. Anyhow, if you also like this YouTube channel of me just kind of ranting about this stuff, then go ahead, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. We're going to be trying to do more and more videos on here, hopefully, and it would help us greatly for the YouTube algorithm, of course, for if you just smash that like button and leave me a comment telling me how much you smash that like button. All right, guys, 
I will talk to you later and I hope everyone is having a fantastic and very profitable day. Talk to you later. Bye.